happening. With a TCP protocol, we're going to see there's more steps to getting connected instead of just firing a packet off and hoping it gets there or not carrying it gets there. Either way is fine with UDP. And in a TCP, we're actually going to take some time to get the connection set up and establish a session, a TCP session, not to be confused with an application layer session like an HTTP session. So the TCP connections, they're, they're going to be established, fancy term meaning that the two computers are going to agree to talk to one another. That's the state that those computers are going to be in. And it's going to start with the client. So the client is going to reach out to the server and it's going to initiate the connection. The server is supposed to respond back with a message saying whether or not it's willing to talk to that client under those conditions. Conditions being things like port, IP address, stuff like that. Technically the IP is going to be handled by the router, so firewalls and things are going to look at that. And the firewall may step in and kind of express its willingness to allow you to talk to that computer. So the computer may be open on port 80 and perfectly willing to serve a web page to anybody that comes along. There may be an intervening piece of equipment like a firewall that might get in the way. But in any case, with the TCP protocol, the devices are supposed to communicate their willingness to talk to you. Now you could have a firewall that drops TCP into a bit bucket and ignores you. Technically that's a violation of the protocol, but that's a good way to keep scanners from working. And, and it is common uh, on exterior gateways to, to drop the packets. Not so common like in a regular home network or something if you're if you're trying this at home. And then lastly the third step is the client is supposed to respond to the server's response, acknowledging that it heard the server's response. And if everything works out, then the two have set up this communications channel and they can start talking back and forth over this port. Now I say over this port because we're talking about the TCP protocol and we're looking at it from its point of view and it communicates over ports. The IP stuff is a great mystery to TCP. So it starts out with a type of a TCP packet called a send packet. And that specifically means that the send flag in the TCP packet, that bit is set. That bit is true if you want to think of it that way, or one if you want to think of it that way. It's, it's actually, that bit is activated. So the send packet comes from the client and goes over to the server. And the server or intervening device, if there is one, is supposed to write back to the client with another TCP packet indicating its willingness to talk. Assuming that it's willing to talk, it's supposed to set the send bit and also the acknowledgement bit. It's acknowledging the synchronized packet. And so the send act packet goes back to the client and then the client, assuming it's still willing to talk, is supposed to send back in response another TCP packet that has the acknowledgement bit set. So back when we were talking about the TCP structure, remember there were the TCP flags and these bits are those flags. So look at the packet structure a little bit more specifically. We can see that we still start out with the source port and the destination port. So, so far we're starting off the same as UDP. Again, those are 16 bits each. The two of them together form a 32-bit word, and they take up the top row of our diagram. But now we actually have these sequence and acknowledgement numbers. So the sequence numbers help the two sides understand if the packets are in the right order. That's the sequence. And then the next row down, the acknowledgement number, helps the two sides communicate back to the sender, whoever the sender is, and you know it's bi-directional communication, so whoever the sender is, the receiver acknowledges receipt. Because if you don't acknowledge receipt, the sender is supposed to send the packet again, and they work through the TCP protocol to make sure that the packets are reassembled in their correct order and that all the packets arrived as requested. So. It's a real, that's what makes TCP more reliable than UDP 
is it bothers to keep things in the right order and it bothers to make sure that the packets showed up. In the next row down, we have a lot of the management flags and management um, data. So we have the, the data offset within the packet. How many bytes over does the data start? And then after that, we skip a few, and then we have the flags. So the flags take up eight bits. And they're broken out in the box at the bottom of the slide here, starting from left to right. The rightmost bit, the fin or finish bit, is considered to be the first bit. It's bit zero. The second bit is the sin. And moving away to the left, you have the reset, the push, and the acknowledgement and urgent bits. Now the two leftmost bits, the two highest, those are used in more advanced TCP networking where you're looking at congestion windows and um, traffic analysis and things like that so that the protocol can help make sure that the traffic moves efficiently. They're not so much control bits on the actual establishment of the session itself. So you can kind of set the two leftmost bits off just a little bit because they have a um, slightly different business problem they're trying to solve than the rightmost bits, which are communicating about uh, how the session's going and how the packets should be treated. The window size is how much data is going to get sent, and then there's a checksum and the urgent pointer which is an offset to data that's really important. And then we have the options and some padding to make it come out even as an even 32-bit word. Finally, at the end. So again, we said to get started, the client sends the send packet, and the receiver, if it's willing to talk, is supposed to send back the send act packet. And then finally, you connect when the client sends the acknowledgement packet back to the server. And this here is the three-way handshake. And there's also other kinds of communications that you can do as well. So for example, if you want to end the conversation, the one side can send the finish flag set in a packet. And it also actually sends an act as well, acknowledging the last packet that came in. Remember, you have to always acknowledge the packets that arrived. So. Whenever there's a connection about to be closed, the one side that's going to send, um, that wants to terminate the communications, is going to send technically a fin ACK packet, but the fin is about closing the connection and the ACK is acknowledging the last packet. And then the other side is going to acknowledge the first fin and it's going to send its own fin and then it's also going to send an ACK acknowledging the fin packet, the first fin packet that showed up. So what you'll see is like a fin ACK, fin ACK, and we're done talking. <laughs> so this all has implications for scanning as well like we talked about with the UDP if you send a send packet and the port is open so the packet actually made it all the way to the host and it didn't get intercepted by an intervening device like a firewall and the operating system had actually assigned a process to listen on the network card on that port and so everything is golden, then the operating system that received your SIN should SIN act back and say, yep, I am willing to talk. And that's a pretty efficient way to figure out if a port is open because you're more or less guaranteed to get back a SIN act if the port's open. You have positive <coughs> acknowledgement. Under, un, uh, like this UDP scenario where we said, you could send a packet to a perfectly open port with a process listing on it and get nothing back. And so you just don't know if it's open or not, even though technically it was. If you send a send packet and something intercepts the send packet, it's supposed to send back either a reset or it can send back an ICMP packet explaining to you why, if it's super friendly. If the send packet makes it all the way to the computer, and the port is closed, 
the operating system of this computer is supposed to send back to you a reset packet basically saying I'm not willing to talk on that particular port at least at this particular time because I don't have a process that's assigned to that port right now. So this means that your TCP scans are going to be a lot faster than your UDP scans. Because in a UDP scan, you don't know if you're going to get an acknowledgement, so you have to wait. And most programs like InMap have a tendency, on average, to wait about one second before they give up. That's a pretty long time, because if you think about the TCP, you send the send packet, and as fast as the host can respond, you're going to get back a send hack or you're going to get back a reset in the speed of electricity. So that's going to be pretty quick, even if it's a fairly long distance. It's going to be quick compared to UDP. It's not uncommon that your TCP scans will go about 100 times faster, roughly, because of this communication protocol difference than your UDP scans are going to go. If you're trying to scan UDP and you have a whole lot of ports to scan, you're going to be there a while. You're going to make a lot of noise and it's going to take perhaps around uh, 18 hours, assuming a very uh, naive UDP scan where you're kind of sending one packet at a time and waiting one second before you send another one, um, before you're going to be done with the scan. Now, of course, you could send a bunch of packets in parallel and seriously cut down that time. But even if you cut it down to an hour and a half, that stinks, right? So with UDP scans, typically you're going to want to pick your spot. You know, pick the top. 10 or 50 or 100 ports that you think the computer is most likely to be listening on or pick the ports that you're interested in. So if you're doing vulnerability assessment and you feel like that there's a likelihood of UDP programs that might be vulnerable that you want to check for, maybe you want to check for the TFTP trivial file transfer protocol, maybe you want to check for UDP 137 to see if there's NetBIOS. So you want to kind of pick your spots with UDP scanning and make a list of things that are most likely to be helpful. With TCP, you can be a little bit more careless about the whole thing and just, you know, let it rip. Maybe the top 1,000 ports probably won't even take very long. And in fact, NMAP by default will scan for about the top 1,000 ports. But being aware of how the two protocols work and what the implications are for scanning is definitely important, uh, at least from the point of view of doing vulnerability assessment or penetration testing. Or also host discovery, inventory discovery, you know, asset identification. So even if you're on the blue team side, um, if, if you're on the blue team side, I don't even have to tell you that one of the most important parts of your job above everything else is figure out what's on the network. It's very hard to defend something if you didn't know it existed. It's also very hard to do something about a vulnerability if you didn't know it was there. So actually having a list of inventory may very well be one of the most important parts of your job if you're trying to take care of, administrate, defend a network.